Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of The Recovery Connection. And I'm so glad that you could join us. Uh, tonight, we have Kate Sanderson from A Place to Go joining us, and I'm really excited and looking forward to having a chat with her. Just a couple of pre-show announcements. Um, uh, just remember that uh, this podcast will be available for streaming on all our platforms next Thursday, so a week from now, uh, if you want. Uh, subscribe to our Spotify channel. We'd really appreciate if you could do that. Uh, to learn more about Jericho Road, just go to our website. It's a beautiful website, and uh, the uh, address is www.jerichoroad.ca. I always say that too quick, so I'll say it a little slower for you now. www.jerichoroad.ca. That makes my uh, producer very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to submit your questions for our, our live question and answer uh, session right after this podcast. You can do it while the podcast is on, and that uh, gives us a little bit of time to get ready. And uh, I think that's about all the announcements I have, but once again, I just want to say thank you for all of you joining us. And uh, please check out our first episode with uh, Jason Pino from Restoring Hope Ministries. It was a really good episode, and uh, Jason had a lot of really interesting things to say and a few good stories to tell. So check that out on, on Spotify. And enough of the, of the gibber gabber. Uh, this is my friend Kate Sanderson, and Kate, um, uh, uh, I guess I was going to say works, but, but runs, uh, helps run a place to go, and that's a ministry here in Ottawa, and so I'm going to let you introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Kate. Um, a place to go. Uh, I'm more interested in talking about a place to go than me. Well, we, we got to talk a little bit about <laughs> you because people need to know who you are. So, um, Okay, I've been a stay-at-home mom for a long, long, long time. My kids are now getting to the point where they don't need me anymore. But Oh, stop. Um, and I'm a grad student, and that takes up a lot of my time. And then I run a place to go. And one, one of the things that before we, we, we get into this here is I didn't know that, that you and Jason Pino knew each other. Yeah. And so when I was telling Jason that, that you were our, our, our guest for episode two, mm -hmm. uh, he was telling me the connection. Can you, uh, can you talk oh, about the connection? I used to be a uh, street outreach worker with Ottawa Inner City Ministries, and Jason was the person who trained me. Okay. How to, like, that was my introduction to this work. Yeah. Um, and how long ago was that? I don't want to date you, but oh, I'm I'm so bad at remembering it. It was like ten years, oh, maybe. Oh goodness, yeah. Like he was in the process of thinking about starting restoring hope. Okay. So however long ago that was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then what happened was when my youngest child was a baby, I slipped and fell while I was holding him, and I landed on my tailbone, and that started a disc getting bigger and bigger yeah, and bigger yeah. and eventually i couldn't carry the backpacks anymore oh yes the so outreach backpacks. i had to quit because yeah. they're you know you're carrying water bottles and juice bottles yeah. and all kinds of stuff yeah. like that so i had to quit and, and that broke my stuff, heart right yeah 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 and that broke my heart and so i looked around for somewhere else to, vol to, to volunteer and i started volunteering with place to go and about uh, eight or nine months in, um, the person who had been leading it decided that she was tired and needed a replacement. And Father Paul at the time appointed me to, to run it. Yeah. And did you say yes immediately? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kate and I were having a little conversation before the start of this uh, uh, podcast episode. And, and we were just talking about sometimes we say no to things when we should say yes to things and vice versa, right? Mm-hmm. So tell me how, because you and I, you and I had talked uh, uh, before this week, tell me how um, uh, this ministry, the, the place to go, started. Because I love that story. Well, it started in the late 1960s. It was the college and careers group for the parish, and it's called A Place to Go because it was a place to go on Friday night. Yeah. They started it out because they, you know, they wanted to have a Christian place to hang out rather than go party on Friday yeah, night. Yeah. And homeless people started wandering in. So they thought, oh, well, I guess we better have some food. So yeah. they started making soup and sandwiches. And eventually, over decades, it evolved into what it is now. Yeah. Like normal, outside of COVID, yes, normal. Yes. 
Um, we have a drop-in. It's a Friday night drop-in. Yep. Every Friday night. Um, and we serve soup and sandwiches. And But it's not, it's not about the food. Yeah. It's about relational. It's about community. Yeah. And we also have a church service once a month. Because I was... Inviting people to church and inviting people to church and inviting people to church and nobody would come and I was very discouraged and then I found out that now I'm I'm going to get the minister I don't know which ministry it does is that does the only lunch on Sundays yeah but they closed at twelve so there was no way to attend church on Sunday morning to choose to attend church on Sunday morning was to choose to go hungry yes. So and given given the choice even for myself if it's going to be a church service or or lunch I'm going to go to lunch. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. And the other thing is is that having a once a month church service it having it there on the Friday night yeah. takes down all the ba- like takes down a lot of walls, right? Yes. Like it's it can be intimidating to walk into a church and yeah. it, we have an old beautiful church with stained glass and all you know it it can be a very intimidating yeah. place to walk into if you don't know what to expect yeah. whereas we just had the church service in the lounge and left the doors open and people could hear us singing and sometimes would wander in and yeah. wander out again yeah. and it's fine so it just makes it a lot easier yeah so tell our viewers uh where the church is again it's at 152 metcalf street beautiful yeah, and it's a beautiful two church. Two blocks away from two blocks away from the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it it, it nurtured into food, and and as you said, food is secondary, but it helps, right? And well, I mean, you got to have the food. Yeah, but that's not our um. And it's raison not the main. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so how has uh, COVID affected that? Oh well. We're we're handing out bag lunches. Yeah, um, you know the positive, and I have to keep reminding myself that there are positives. Yeah, is you know we are having our smiling faces at the door every yeah. week and just being there every yeah. week and that continuity of care. Yeah, and um, still that connection point and the connection. Right? You know, yeah. you can't really have much of a conversation because you've got. What we did was we have um, a door out onto Metcalf Street. Yeah. And what we did was we put two tables right in the doorway so that it would be an enforced six foot distance. And we package lunches and we put them in boxes and we put them on tables and people can just help themselves so that there's no, especially before the vaccines. Yes, yes. Right? This is, we were doing this well before the vaccines. Yep. Um, so that would inf- enforce the six feet distance and, and keep our volunteers safe. And how has, how has COVID affected your volunteer base? A lot of people had to bow out. Yeah. You know, either, um, you know, there's one person whose wife has a chronic illness and he couldn't, um, he couldn't risk it. Um, another person who has uh, heart issues. So she said, no, I can't. Yeah. Understandably you know? so. So yeah. it, yeah, it, um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess six or seven people who volunteer yeah. regularly now, and, and before it was like thirty. Yeah, and and how is it now, like moving forward? As because everyone keeps saying the light at the end of the tunnel. Are you seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, or mm. it's tough? Eh? Yeah, yeah, I no. I mean, yes and no. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I my my head knows that this will end eventually. Yeah. I don't think my heart's convinced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, the longest 18 inches in the world is between Christian's yeah, yes. head and their, and heart, their heart, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. yes. The big they're, mile. So, yes, yeah. the right answer is yes. There yeah. is light at the end of the tunnel. We will get back to normal at some point. Yeah. That at some point is not soon enough for me. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. One of the things that I was talking to Jason Pinot about and, and what I really like about a place to go uh, because it's on the same playing field is, is what we say here all the time is we have to meet people where they're at. Mm-hmm. And so how does that look to you, meeting people where they're at? It looks like being quick to listen and slow to speak. Yeah. 
That's yeah. what it looks like. It, you know, we have two ears and one mouth no, for a you reason. Know, that just went into my head because we yeah. were talking about that the other day. You know, it's a great saying in, in recovery, right? God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. But the thing is, is that so <clears throat> many of our people don't have anyone who listens deeply yeah, to them. To listen well. Yeah, th- th- there's a difference between just listening to make your next point. Yes. Right? Yeah. And, and actually being attentive and just listening yeah. and i think when i first started leading the ministry i i didn't i didn't really get that you know i was you know had the 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 you know the messiah complex big oh, time yes. you know yes, we all go yes. through it right yeah but um i don't know what you're talking about oh of course you don't <laughs> um <laughs> if you believe that i've got a bridge yeah, in brooklyn yeah, yeah. i'd like to sell you i thought she was gonna throw the water at me there no no, no, no. <laughs> um what were we where were we meeting people where they're at listening yes. well yes um it looks like just being a consistent safe christian place for people to hang out and be safe yeah um that's that's one of the things that we really really concentrate on is being safe now we will let people into the drop in if they're high or if they've been drinking as long as they're safe and they don't yeah. like i don't care if someone wants to come in and sleep it off on the couch yeah. right as, yeah. as long as you're not bothering anybody yeah. and yeah. but the, the minute you start getting angry or start acting out it's like you, yeah. need, you need to leave you can come back next week yeah yeah you know yeah um and so and so on the same lines you know when wh- where we say we're trying to meet people where they're at and 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 you know, the big part of that is being able to listen because a lot of us don't have anyone who's actually listening to us. Yeah. And part of that... Um, and that it's so healing. It's so healing. It's so therapeutic because, you know, we're... we're I, I, I always say and I firmly believe that we are meant to live in community. Mm-hmm. We, we are meant to uh, be together and, yep. and, and have people to talk to and have people who are going to listen. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that you and I were chatting about was that um, if you're homeless or, or you're uh, down on your luck uh, or any other situation where you're, you're having a tough time, it can be very isolating. And, and for us here at Jericho, we know that isolation is a killer. Yeah. Right? In addictions, being isolated means that I'm only listening to to my my voice and if i'm only listening to my voice it can be it can be debilitating right Mm -hmm. so so how do you see in the clients that 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 come to a place to go how do you see that uh, uh, isolation is 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 detrimental to these uh people who who come it like you said it's a killer you know, if if you're isolated, if you don't have friends, if you don't have anyone who's listening to you, it's so easy to to get into that self-hating, mm. depressive spiral uh, that can really only be stopped by having someone else look you in the eye and say, you, you, "God made you, and you're important, yeah. and and you're worthy of respect, and you're 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 worthy of my att- of, well, my attention." That, it's not me. It's yeah. like whoever's attention, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just it looks like respect. Yeah, that's fabulous. We talk a lot uh, in recovery about survival mode mm-hmm. and 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 what uh, what survival mode is because a lot of people don't understand what survival mode is. So how do you see survival mode uh, in that ministry? Oh boy. Um, I have stories, but some of them are hard to tell and keep confidentiality, yeah, right? Yeah. But give uh, me, give me in general what you, how uh, you see how survival mode affects people. So let, let's start. It off. keeps them on the street. It keeps them on the street. Yeah. It keeps them on the street. It keeps them um, stuck. Yeah, that's like, a good word. You know, even if you're not, even if you have a place to stay, if you're living on welfare or ODSP. <clears throat> ODSP and yeah. you, you have to go to drop, drop in to drop in and drop yeah. in to to eat that there's a lot of stigma attached to that right a, a friend and of mine a friend of mine um, that I met in in a 12-step program said that 
Uh, survival mode is waking up every day ready for battle. Yeah. And and I I was it it, it threw me because I actually thought about what he was saying and was like, my goodness, you're 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 starting every day ready to to battle the world to get your basic needs man well it's like these folks are starting and there's, there's been a pit dug under them yeah right and and they're starting halfway in the pit whereas you and i are on the ground yeah right like i opened my fridge this morning my freezer is stuffed with meat okay my i i know that when i run out of milk i can go down to the corner and buy more milk and yeah. it's it's not i don't have to devote mental energy to that yeah yeah, and that's and one of the things he was saying, the mental stress yeah. that's associated with that, right? The the the, the fear of, of where your next meal is going to come mm -hmm. from or the fear of where you're going to sleep tonight or the fear of, of am I going to get robbed walking the street or the fear of, you know, I, I, have, I have $30 left to last me to the end of the month and it's only week one and, you know, yeah. the, the, it's, it's just, it's stressful, very stressful. Very stressful. And so, and so... Um, how, how, how do we start to help people get out of survival mode? Wow. Um, the Coles Notes answer. Us as ministry? Yes. Well, for a start, I think ministry leaders need to start talking to each other and learning what other ministries provide. Yeah. And knowing where to refer people. Yes, that's a big one. You eh? know, like... Uh, if, if someone walked into place to go in six months and said, I, I'm ready, I need to get help, I need to get clean, yeah. I don't, I'm not sure I would know yeah. who to call at 9 yeah. o'clock on a Friday night. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I think that we're... Oh, sorry, I've just lost, I lost my thread. We're talking about talking survival, about survival mode, right? Survival mode, yeah, yeah. Um, how do we help people get yeah. out of it? Um, by trying to model that there are other ways to live yeah. you know and i don't want to be glib about that because if there's certain things that um if you're in survival mode and you're on the street like there's there's stuff that i i can't help you with right yeah. like if you're on the street because you're mentally ill and you're too sick to know that you're sick it's not a lot i can do other than yeah. listen Right. Yeah. Um, what, but what, someone what, is homeless and needs a place to stay. You know, I can get on the we phone. Can, we can start and, navigating there and start navigating yeah. there. Yeah. But again, I I mean, I know that there that the Sally Ann has housing workers, but I don't I don't know enough about what everybody in the city is doing is doing. Yeah. In order to help people, and I think that's a big, that's yeah. a big so gap. Jason Pinot, he, t w him, and I were talking, and he touched on this, and he said, "There's no Walmart for social services." Yeah. I love that line, because he hit it right on the head. Right? There's, 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 there's so many good people doing good things and good ministries, but we, we, we don't know what each each other's doing, and and neither do the people. Who are in survival mode well and i think it's just because everybody's so busy yeah. you know like i think i'm an exception to that because i'm a volunteer and this ministry is a once a week thing it's not something that i have to be thinking about 24 7 and, yeah. and fundraising for and all the rest of it so yeah. i think as far as ministry leaders in the city to go i'm in a pretty privileged position but i think most of you guys are just so flipping busy yeah. that who's got even who's got time to be yeah. thinking about um, making connections with yeah. other ministries. And that's, but, uh, we always say, how, how many hats are you wearing? Yeah. Right? Because, we, we, but the other, the other end of that is, is that uh, uh, the ministries in the city, I find, do what they do really well with very little. Oh, yes. Because, uh, you know, the, the um, executive director, Hope, who was here at Jericho for 11 years, said, and I love this line, she said, we're scrappy. You know, we, we, we're, we're able to do a lot of things with very little. Yep. And, and I was talking to Jason about that also. Um, um, I can't wait till we get more guests, John, as we go down the line so I don't have to keep referring to Jason. <laughs> if, if you're listening, Jason, <laughs> take it as a compliment. Um, um, we were talking about the halo effect. And the halo effect says that for 
Um, every dollar you give to a, a nonprofit doing social work in the city, it's worth $4.50 to the city. Oh, yeah. Because they can't do what we're doing for the money that we do it with. No, and like, f for instance, for a place to go, I mean, the church pays for it. Um, and the, but there's, there's so many people who make sandwiches or make food or buy stuff for the ministry and they don't submit their receipts. Yes. Yeah. Right? And that means that what the money that we do have can go out so much faster. Like we had a, a instead of um, doing a shoebox ministry this past December, we had a, a sock and mitt and glove drive. So the, we, the congregation was asked to take the money they would have put in the shoeboxes and buy gloves and hats and mitts for the people at Place to Go. And we were inundated. Beautiful. Right? And, and there was also an option just to give money. Yeah. So we were able to buy all kinds. Like, I, just, I had, I think, two rough totes full of socks and mitts and hats yeah. and gloves. And they, they all went. And, and, that's, and that's stuff that you need, right? Right. Yeah. And that's, that's stuff that homeless people lose. Yeah. Right, so I found myself sometimes getting impatient. Someone coming, I, I didn't I give you a pair of gloves two weeks ago? Yeah, <laughs> but that's if, what happens. But if you're homeless, yes. it does yeah. happen, you know. Yeah. yeah, one of one of the uh, things I wanted to talk about is um, there. We seem to hear the word uh, stigma and stigmatization, mm -hmm. and 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 it's it's becoming very prevalent in the news. Mm -hmm. And and I think they're 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 very valid in, in in these conversations. And so, how do you see stigmatization um, um, with with the people that you serve? Oh my goodness, where do I start? Well, um, start at the easiest one. Uh, start at the easiest one. Um, there's a stigma against mental illness. Yes. Against admitting that you have a mental illness yes, for a start. Yeah, yeah. Well, just um, look what happened in the Olympics, right? You know, one of the athletes was saying, oh, I'm right, not yeah. mentally prepared to do this, and I'm, I'm battling some mental health issues, and, and the courage it took to do that. And she and got that, dumped on. <coughs> and that's, that's, that's my whole point. Why were people saying the courage? Because it, it, the norm is we don't talk about it. No. We don't admit it. We don't talk about it. And, and life just goes on. And there, there's, I think sometimes there's an internalized stigma when you've lived with poverty for a long time. Um, and you get, you, when you've been looked down on for a long time, yeah. I think people start to internalize it. And I see that a lot. Yeah. I see that a lot. And... I think the, my volunteers, my volunteers, they're not my volunteers. <laughs> they're the church's <laughs> volunteers. Thank you very much. But um, we listen. Yeah. And I'm getting back to listening, but I think that's that's so vital. Yeah. Um, when people walk in and they're just, they, they just seem so tired. Yeah. Because it's exhausting. And that goes back and, to that survival mode, right? Yeah. Being in survival mode is exhausting. And I, I think so sometimes I get frustrated and don't feel like we're doing a lot. Yeah. But um, I think sometimes we underestimate the power of a smile. Mm. And how are you mm -hmm. and not the kind of how are you that it's just a greeting mm -hmm. the kind of how are you where you really want to know yes and you're going to listen to gonna the answer and you're going to take the time to listen yeah. to the answer yeah. yes one of the things that i know with especially with stigmatization and you kind of touched on it there was was if if that's all that that people know and so what i see a lot in our ministry is um intergenerational um, um, poverty, intergenerational uh, um, substance use, intergenerational. Um, oh yeah. Um, um, how do I say it? Uh, survival. You know, and if this is all I've ever known. Then how do I get out of it? Someone else has got to open a door. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Somebody else has got to open a door and say, "There's a better way." Yeah. You know, um, like my grandfather was an alcoholic. My father was every adult in my, when I was growing up, every adult in my life was either an alcoholic or married to one. Um, so that becomes. 
Well, for me, that became became I'm never touching this stuff ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't. I so don't. how do we? How do we? How do we as a society stop this intergenerational? Abuse, intergenerational oh. addiction or substance use disorders, intergenerational poverty. How do we begin uh, putting, uh, you know, I, I hate to use the term because it's very churchy, but break the chains. Yeah. How do we begin to start breaking those chains? Now, do you I mean know as a ministry or as a society? Because there's a difference. There's a big difference. As but a society, you're talking about politics yeah. and you're talking about, I mean, I could... I could talk forever about that, about, you know, the, I think one way to do it would be to have a guaranteed minimum income, mm. fold all of it into a guaranteed yeah. minimum income. There was a, now, you and I touched on, there this. was an experiment in the prairies. I think it was in the seventies. They, they, for they did the one community that did a guaranteed minimum income. And you know what happened? People went back to school. Yes. You know, just, just the ability to go, to go to school and yeah. to get training for a job that you actually can do yeah. and there's a demand for, that's an incredible privilege. And that's something that I'll, I think a lot of folks just think is like pie in the yeah. sky. There's no way. You and I were talking, uh, we touched uh, uh, before on CERB, right? And, and how the government was giving $2,000 a month to people because of, of the pandemic. Yet, if you're on ODSP or uh, Ontario Works, you're getting $700 or $1,100 a month, respectively. And, and so what the government is basically saying is $2,000 a month is a living wage, and we're going to pay you a living wage because most businesses have had to shut down. But if you're on social assistance or, or disability, you don't qualify for a living wage. So, yeah, so really, what their what their what their actions did to me, what their actions did was say, you don't deserve a living wage. Yep. We're going to give everybody else a living wage, but you don't deserve a living wage, because what we're paying people on ODSP or social assistance is not a living wage. Well, I I think that the whole now, I should watch. Be careful because <laughs> I don't know a whole lot about the welfare system and how it runs. Yeah. I just see the results of it. Yeah. And from looking at the results of it, it seems to be designed punitively. Yes. Like, I, I knew this guy. I won't say his name, but I, I think I can tell his story. He was having dental work done. Yes. And welfare was paying for it. And halfway through, I mean, literally, he had the posts for the implants in his mouth. Yeah. And they changed their minds about paying for it. And he walked into his worker and he said, you want me to get a job? Fine. Well, how the H am I supposed to do that with no teeth? And the worker changed their mind. Yeah. And they paid for yeah. it. Yeah. But, I mean, this is the kind of thing that, that, that people on welfare have to deal with all the time. Yeah. And it is, I'm, I'm sure it's exhausting. So do you think as, as, as ministries, as a collective group of people who, who provide social services in the city to the people who desperately need them the most, do you think that, that it is our job to, to try to advocate for change in that system? Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, that's a toughie. That, eh? that and and is... I, don't, I don't expect, I don't expect a, 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 an answer that 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 is is compromising to the jobs that we do i'm just in general do you think that that we can have a hand I in, think, in helping that i think some people are called to that yeah um i'm not yeah um my husband keeps telling me i should run for municipal <laughs> politics and it's like no <laughs> no I would, what were we I talking would, about earlier? I would about rather be no? poked in the eye with a sharp <laughs> stick. Oh, no, 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 no. But I do think that, as, as I said, I think some people are called to it. Yeah. Um, but, I think I would just get so frustrated yeah. that it would be <laughs> pretty pointless. But, I mean... Jason had to do that yeah. when when he was setting up it. He had to deal with uh, not in my backyard. Yes, yeah, and NIMBY. and and, yeah. and get 
um, advocate with the city, and and he got it done, and he's yeah. got his shelter running. Yeah. And more power to him. I don't think I could do it. Do you do you think that we could have a voice in educating people? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. I think that's really important, and I. I'm kind of tedious about that when I'm talking to people, especially at church. It's like, if you see a homeless person, it doesn't matter if you can't give them any money or it doesn't matter if you don't want to give them any money for whatever for whatever reason. Yeah. But smile and say hi. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, I, acknowledge I, their presence. Acknowledge their presence. Like, I mean, sometimes I give, sometimes I don't. It depends upon the circumstances. But even when I'm not going, even when I know... The, I mean, part of, part of it is I pay with my debit card all the time. I never have cash in my yeah, pocket. Yeah. But even if you know you're not going to say, you're not going to give them money, don't just ignore them and walk by. Make eye contact and say hi. Yeah. Um, offer to pray with them if, if, you, if you feel called to do that. But, but don't ignore them. They're people. Yeah. They're people I, made in the I, image I of always, God. I always remember, um, I always remember, I'm going to tell, tell a quick story here because I'm not... I'm not the type of person who would ask someone if I could pray for them. I just, yeah. I'm, I, maybe I'm not there yet. I, I'm actually you know, not either, you know, mostly. And, and I remember we were downtown um, um, going out for dinner, and, and there was a, a man that was uh, sitting on the sidewalk, and he was uh, panhandling, and uh, I recognized him. I knew who mm. he was. I knew who he was from from the rooms of of uh, the twelve step fellowships that I belong to. Yeah. And so I ended up just saying hello to him, and and you know I'm hoping that you're you're surviving and, and everything's okay. And I don't know what happened, but the words came out of my mouth. Can I pray for you? Mm. And I thought, oh my goodness! I just asked him if I could pray for him. I'm <laughs> hoping that he says no. <laughs> and he looked me right in the eyes and said, I would love that. And and so now I'm I'm learning I have to be a bit more intentional about asking people, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we have to be careful not to be pushy. Well, like that's, I, that's and that's what I'm so afraid of, yeah. right? I'm so afraid of, of of offending people. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't offer to pray, uh, like that that would not be the first words out of my mouth. Yes. But after you've had a conversation yeah. for a while and you get a feel well, those, for those, it, for for the record, those were the parting words before I left. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, I, I firmly believe that evangelization has to start with relationship. Yeah. Right? Like, people have heard the evangelization words so often, but there's no love behind it sometimes, right? Like, the, the, you know, the stereotypical, um, you, you got, you got to make, converts you got to make yeah. have people how many have you saved today well yeah but I'm, I'm not saying that's not important it is it important is, but, but it's got to start with relationship yeah. if you don't have a relationship with the person you do not have the right to to start that conversation yeah. you need to have the relationship first because otherwise it's just words and 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 it is <laughs> relational right yeah. You know, our, 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 how do I say this without sounding too, our, our, our relationship with Jesus is a relationship. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, a, a very big relationship and, and, and that takes time to nurture. It yes. takes time to, to, um, um, be, be intentional about nurturing that relationship. And and I feel the same thing applies, right? It, it takes time. You have to start to build a relationship, and so I agree with you wholeheartedly. And and I think and I think that that is the one thing that ministries in this city, from what I've seen, do very well is they're very intentional about forming yeah. the relationships. I would say that it probably took three years of my leading the ministry before people started to trust me. Mm. You know, just in general. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I guess, you know, they're used to being let down. They're used to people mm. coming into their life and leaving their lives. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it takes a long time to just, I'm going to get teary. If, if you've been in survival <laughs> mode, yeah. right? 
you, you've you've taught yourself not to trust people. Yes. It, yeah. It's 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 a it's a it's a defense. Well, I did that. that. <laughs> I did that. I mean, I've been there. I still sometimes have t- trouble trusting people. Yeah. When you've been hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt your whole life, of course you're not going to trust easily. Yeah. And I mean, if, that's if it's, just if it's been ingrained in you. When we talk about intergenerational poverty and intergenerational um, um, abuse and whatnot. Um, I always, always, when I'm having these conversations, talk about adverse childhood experiences and trauma <laughs> from. Yes. Because this is where it all stems, right? Yep. So, so if 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 I've if I've had these these adverse childhood experiences and I've 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 had trust that has been broken, especially uh, uh, not only with with strangers or 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 uh, friends, but with family. Yeah. I have put up enough thick concrete wall that it's not coming down just because you and I are having a conversation one night. No. Right? It takes a long time. A long time. time. And 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 so one of the things that, that we always say here at Jericho is is we're in for the long haul. We're in it for the long haul. Because we have to be. If if yep. we if we want to if we want to a- impart hope through Jesus we have to be in it for the long haul. Yeah. We, we, we just can't do the little and then stop. No. So, so how, how do you see doing the long haul? Um, the first words that popped into my mouth were taking care of myself. Oh. Popped into my mouth, popped into my head. Yeah. And <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? Secondary. <laughs> Borrowed <laughs> lips tonight. Um, but how are you in it for the long haul? Well, just be stubborn. Right? Like, okay, the first thing is I got to take care of myself. It's like the, the what they say when you're on an airplane. If you've got kids beside you and the yeah, oxygen, the oxygen mask comes, comes down, down yeah, yeah. You, you don't put it on your kid first. You put it on yourself first yeah. so that you don't pass out before you put it on your kid. Yeah. If, if, you're, if I'm running on empty and... And I'm grumpy and cranky, and I'm not looking after myself properly. Then I've got nothing to give anybody else. Yes. So you know, number one, look after myself. But number two, just—I mean, you just have to do it. I mean, you just have to put one foot in front of the other and be determined and just Boots say, to the ground. "I am." You know, this is my calling. This is where I belong. This is where I'm staying. And, you know, you can be away from place to go for a year and a half and then come back. And the odds are I will be there. Like, I mean, I, I take a Friday off every now and then. Yeah. Like, if I, one of my kids' birthdays, I don't, I'm not there. I'm at yeah, home. Family but, first. But, but the, I've, I've been there long enough that, that these people see me every week and they know that I'm not going anywhere. And even people I've had to say, okay, you need a time out. You need to go. And if you refuse to go, you're banned for two weeks. You know, sometimes you have to do that yeah. for the safety of everybody else. But th- even those folks come back. Yeah. Because yeah. they know it's not. Okay, so th- there's, there's my question. Why do they come back? For the community? Yes. Why else? Because they feel safe. Yeah. 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 We always we always say here at Jericho that um, a lot of times this is the last house on the block, and and we have we have uh, clients who have uh, started uh, the our discipleship program. They they leave after three months, or they they leave after six months, or they 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 complete the program and don't go to second stage or or What's, continuing care. Is the care. discipleship program is that the that, first that's step? That's the first step. Yeah, yeah. It's so our nine month residential. Uh, Are people? Do they have to have be uh, like clean before they come in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so I- even if they go away, mm-hmm. a lot of the time, I mean, all of the time, they come back. And I always say, why do they come back? Why? Because they felt loved. Because they felt loved. They felt the love of God, and they felt the love of another human being. Yep. And then what you said, they felt they felt safe. And, and they know that we want what's best for you, yes. even if it's hard. Yes. 
right? Yeah. Yeah, just like our kids, right? Yeah. 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 So I guess, you know, before we, we, we go to question and answer period, my, my big question to you, because you touched on it, how do you keep yourself healthy and, and spiritually fit to talk, be a good listener, and, and deal with the stuff that you have to deal with? That has been so hard because I am a raving extrovert. And I need people like what under normal circumstances, I'm at church every week, I'm at the Bible studies. Uh, you know, if something's going down at church that looks like fun and it's community with people, I'm there and yeah. that energizes me. Like for me, um, I'm not very good at stereotypical evangelical quiet time because I have ADHD and it's just like, let's get on to the next <laughs> thing. And, my hamster brain just doesn't like it. I mean, I don't I, know anybody like that. I, 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 I do it. I mean, I do it, but it, it's it's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. And for me, the way I look after myself is to make sure that I'm I'm going out enough and that I have enough community in my life. And that's been really really hard these yeah. last couple of years. Yeah. So it's it's. It's been tough. The isolation has been a killer. It's been tough. I've used Zoom a lot. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Zoom and text yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah. all that sort of thing yeah. to stay in touch and there's, with my there's friends. There's another word that I, that I keep hearing, and especially with, with agencies and ministries that do what we do, <laughs> pivoting. I don't want to hear oh. the word pivot anymore. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we pivoted to these sack lunches, yeah. and it was g a good and proper thing to do, and I'm glad we're doing it, but I can't wait till things are back to yeah. normal. Well, I think we're we, all there. Well, I think, I think you hit it on the head. We're all there, right? And, and we're just, I know that we're not going back to normal. It's going to be the new normal, but at least some sense of, Normal. But I think another thing that would be really good, especially for leaders, um, we need to get together. We need to get yeah. people together and just, you know, shoot the breeze. Yeah. You know, when, when things get back to normal, maybe get a group of people, of leaders of ministries in this city so, together yes. and, and have a meal or just yeah. just be together and... and, and be with people who get you like I, I think so this this is episode two mm -hmm. right and both of my guests you and jason said the exact same thing the exact it's same good. thing it's i think now i'm including myself in this i think people who are focused on mercy ministries are all a little weird in the same way <laughs> And it's really cool to be with a group of people who are all a little weird in exactly the same yes. way that you're a little yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's energizing and, yeah. and, and healing, yeah. I think. And not not only for the connection aspect of it, but yeah. also from what you were saying at the beginning, so that we can we can connect and understand what everyone else is doing, right? Because Jericho Road's been here for thirty years and, and, and you didn't know everything about Jericho Road. I didn't even know a place to go existed until I talked to Amy, one of our our, our continuing care coordinator, mm -hmm. who who goes to the church and and was like, "Oh, there's this great ministry," and and I'm like, "How did I not know about that?" You know, but how many of us are out there doing this 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 great stuff and and we're not we're not? I mean, aware. I know about the places that my people talk about. Yes. They talk about the Jericho Road drop in. They talk about St. Luke's. They talk about. Um, Oh, I'm blanking. Anyway, lots of places. And, and, and the other, the other thing in that in that line is that we can also. What I'd like to see. This is my my addition to it. Is I would like to be able to see us, um, um, a taking the silos down. Mm -hmm. Right. There's nothing proprietary about what we do. No. A and B sharing resources. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge one because a lot of times, as as people in ministry we have stuff or stuff is given to us or or we have access to stuff that other agencies could use you know what that would be as simple as a private facebook group you think yeah yeah that could be as yeah. simple as a private facebook group that just you know i i've got someone who needs yeah. a bunk bed do any of you anybody have a bunk bed yeah. that we can deliver to yeah. thus and such a yeah. place yeah you know it doesn't yeah. have to be complicated yeah 
Maybe we overcomplicate things. Sometimes. Hey. I think so. Wow. That's been wonderful. <clears throat> Let's go to no. John told me I got to do after show announcements before we go to question okay. and answer. So next month announcements, announcements. I should have one of those uh, one of those graphic things. Announcement, announcement, announcement. Okay, sorry. <laughs> John's looking at me very sternly. <laughs> next month episode three. Our guest is Dave Black from New Connections, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that one because I know Dave. And they're doing a great job in their ministry. Uh, starting in September, our podcast is going bi-weekly. And uh, the uh, alternating two weeks, we're going to be talking with uh, people and friends of ours that are in recovery. And that uh, 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 have a good outlook on, on, on what's going on. And I'm, I'm looking forward to some really good conversations that about that. That sounds like it could be very interesting. Yes, yes. And I was thinking of a 3 o'clock talk that I did a while back, and um, um, we were talking about sponsorship, mm -hmm. uh, two of us in recovery, and, and, and it was just so exciting, and, and it was so honest, and, and I really enjoyed that, and so that's what, uh, that's what we're going to do starting in September, so stay tuned for that, and remember to subscribe to our podcast on all the major steaming, uh, streaming platforms, steaming platforms, <laughs> that's a real good one, can you edit that one out, John? Good golly, <laughs> on that note... <laughs> we will go to question and answer. Do we have any questions, John? Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. John says to say thank you to our audience. Thank you to Kate for coming here. Thank My you pleasure. so much. It's it's been a blast, and it's not over yet. Any questions, Sean? <laughs> Three questions. Okay, hit us. Okay, so the first question for Kate: If you could wave a magic wand and meet <laughs> So if you could wave a magic wand and meet one need, what would it be? And why. And why. Oh, and the why. That's the backup. I would clone Jericho Road for women. Oh. So would I. Wow. That's what I would do. I'm honored that you would say that. That, that is the, I, uh, from what I can say, actually there's two things. Okay. I would clone Jericho Road for women. Did we allow two? And... Okay. I would wave a magic wand so that all the people on the streets of Ottawa who are too sick to know that they're sick with mental illness would would be able to get help. Yeah. So those, those that that's the, the one thing that'll bring me to tears more than anything is that and, the people who are on the street because they're mentally ill and they don't think they're mentally ill. Yeah. So they won't take their meds, and but if they took and, their meds, yes. they'd be off the street. And you and I were talking about this before the yeah. program tonight, and that's one of the things that I really hate about mental illness, especially schizophrenia, is it's a disease that tells you you, you don't want to be on medication. You don't yeah. need it, right? And, and so it's so uh, cyclical in, 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 the, um, uh, in the illness. I, I was saving this to last mm -hmm. because um, I know how much this means to you. We put it up on our uh, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, I saw that. You saw that, eh? So you said to me and John when we were talking in our pre-production uh, conversation, you said, homelessness has always offended me. It is an absolute disgrace that a society as prosperous and rich as Ottawa, and there are very rich people in Ottawa, it's an absolute disgrace that there are people on the street. It is a disgrace that there are people on the street who are only there because no one's made them take their medication. Mm. You know, the difference or between... Or they don't have a place to live with someone to help them daily take their medication. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or I, I just, they break my heart. Yeah. So you know? why does it offend you? Why does it offend me? Yeah. Because these are people who are made in the image of God and have inherent dignity and worth. And that inherent dignity and worth is being tr stomped into the ground yeah. by their mental illness. Yeah. You know, you said that word worth, and that resonates with me because we always tell our 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 our. Uh, people who come to Jericho to begin their journey, we always tell them, you are worth it. This has nothing to do with anybody else. It has to do with you, and you are worth. 
And and some people have, you know, I mean, there was a time in my life where I would not have believed that if someone had said it to me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and th- those words, just to have someone say you're worth it and I'm going to be here for you, is it's so healing. Yeah. Especially when you've never heard it. Or never believed it. Yeah. Question two, John. Is there any demographic that is overrepresented at a place to go? Overrepresented? Um, most of our people are not homeless. Most of our people are either on welfare or ODSP mm-hmm. or some other so- form of social assistance yeah. uh, and just don't. How they either don't have the money for food or their apartment is so small they can't socialize yeah. in it. So they, they go to the drop ins to, to eat and to be social. I would say that's pro- under normal circumstances. Again, I'm not talking about now, mm-hmm. but under normal circumstances, I would say maybe 15 to 20 percent of the people who come to place to go are homeless, yeah. and the rest are uh, just people who are living in really deep poverty yep and that says something too about the people that are going there the need for community the need for relationship yeah Yeah. social it's it's the relational poverty that is the killer and spiritual fulfillment right because because i know that that when i came into recovery i was spiritually dead dead there was nothing nothing in the tank and it needed to be filled I don't want to get into into the whole hunger versus uh, food insecurity. That's that's another podcast. No. Yes, <laughs> but but we'd it, be it, here it, till we'd eleven. We'd be here till eleven. It goes to the point that John just made, right? And and that you made at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, number three, John. Yeah. So how have you seen God or the image of God in the people you serve? Oh, you're gonna make me cry. Yes. Um. <laughs> All the time, every day, every person I talk to. Uh, it, how have I seen the image of God? You, when you do these things, and I'm going to butcher it, of course, um, but uh, when you do these things for the least of these, you do it for me. Yeah. And I mean, I, I'm not sure I can answer how. It, it's just, it's, it's every single person. Every single person is made in the image of God. And that when I said homelessness deeply offends me, that's why. Yeah. Because the the are people who are in survival mode who should not be. Right? Like yeah. they would they and, and I'm not I'm not saying that there's no personal agency involved and that, you know, you've got to be ready to go into recovery. You've got to be ready to get off yeah. the street. Yeah. With the notable exception of, exception of people who are too sick to know that they're sick, yeah. which we got into, which we've been into before. But, um, yeah, I'm babbling now, no, that's so okay. maybe that's you okay. could you're ask making, me something no, you're, else. You're, you're, making, you're, you're making total <laughs> sense, and, and I think I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to add on to you, and it's very simple. I see the image of God and people every day and what happens in recovery is people come into recovery and and they're so beat up and they're so dehumanized and they can't look at you in the eyes and they yep. look at the floor yep. 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 And, and 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 they don't have their solution anymore so they don't know what to do and and as they take that journey that's when i start to see the image of god because yep. they they come into that awake that spiritual awakening, yeah. You know, and and nine months later, they look healthy, they feel healthy. But the most important thing is they're spiritually on that road to healthiness. Yep. And they can look you in the eye. <sighs> right? That's magic. That to me, yeah, is the face of God. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Any other questions, John? We are officially done. Kate, okay. it's been such a pleasure. Um, I know we will continue to talk and, and, and see, and I'm going to 
call Jason and 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 I really believe that that and, and I'm hoping that through uh, this podcast we can start uh, opening those channels of communication between so. us all. Yeah. And uh, and what a better way to do it than maybe with some food, <laughs> right? You know, but really, right? Christian, yes. Christian crack, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Uh, St. Peter, St. Paul, and God bless your ministry. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing you again. Likewise. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you uh, next month. And uh, remember that we're going to be going bi-weekly again. Remember, if you need any more information about Jericho Road, www.jerichoroad.ca. And uh, remember to sign up for our Spotify uh, podcast, Recovery Connection, Jericho Road. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again. God bless everybody. Bye.